Uh, welcome to the today class. Uh, today, uh, we'd like to talk about scale invariant region selection method, also one of the very well known manually created descriptor, the SIP. Uh, I'd like to have, uh, I have some uh, some announcement. Uh, actually, there I uh, refined some of my the book chapter, and also there I upload them into the home page. So basically, there if you're unclear on some of the, my lecture material, I recommend you to the look at the, this uh, look at the, this web page uh, of uh, of my book, and then you can go over the uh, more detailed version of explanation about the uh, about what you've talked about so far. And also there also uh, I invited one of our this uh, classmates to class here, and then also there I'd like to have some interaction with him. But there, due to the, this privacy issue, I I won't invite him to here actually. So uh, I wish that at the end of this class, uh, I, I hope that you can understand the, this the, how we can select the, the scale invariant method for the, uh, choosing the region. And then along that line, I will talk about automatic scale selection method. Also some of the very well-known technique like the uh, Laplacian of the gradient, which is also efficiently approximated by the, the difference of the, this gradient, DOG. But actually, this actually technically very well known or uh, common use for the many other this, uh, computer vision or image processing uh, technique. Also, the, uh, uh, at the end, we will talk about this SIP as a local descriptor. Also, as a review of the, what I talked about last time, so at the last, uh, last lecture, we talked about the like, different conferences of the, uh, related to this, uh, uh, our course theme, image search. Computer vision, uh, also this uh, machine learning and some other uh, ones. So you can actually grab, you can go over the, the paper from those conference. Uh, we talked about actually some of the, the desirable property for the, this uh, image descriptors, which should be the invariant to the various changes like illumination, also the photo uh, illumination, also occlusion, or many other these variations. And uh, as an example, we talked about uh, this manually created one, this terrorist corner detector. And, uh, and today we will move on to this SIF, uh, mainly because that this terrorist corner detector uh, was rotation invariant, but was not invariant to the scale. So actually, we do not address that issue based on this technique. And after that, we will uh, probably next time we will move on to the deep learning. Okay, let's look at the here. Uh, <laughs> Suppose that we actually identify the, some of the very interesting key points into the, the image. So we can use the, this the, uh, Harris corner detector or some other, other uh, tools. So suppose that did X mark the actually interesting key point. So for example, actually we can use Harris corner detector. It's actually useful in terms of for, uh, precisely localizing this interesting key point. Also, there are basically there are very high repeatability for the same, same the feature of the uh, image even though when we look at the same object in a different view. That's a very good one. But in the end, we need to actually, the just key point itself is not enough for describing that region, right? That, that information. So usually we need to define the certain this uh, region uh, uh, within this uh, uh, window, and then we need to look at the, all those pixels, and then we need to summarize those information uh, that can be from those pixels within the window. So to do that, we need to define the, the proper window size, right? In other words, we need to define the region or the image patch. So then, uh, how, we can it, how can we do that? Especially, uh, basically, we can also, we can look at the same object, same scene, with the, the zooming in or zooming out, right? So basically, the, across, the diff, uh, across the dif different that kind of zooming level, we need to identify that uh, the image window in a scale invariant way. That's the key issue that we'd like to address here. One of simple approach is that, okay, so I don't have clear idea of the choosing proper resolution, of, of proper this, uh, choosing the proper window size. Oh, then I will just uh, try it out all the other ones, right? So one example is the multi-scale approach. For example, is that, uh, so hold that if we fail to choose the, this the proper, window, uh, proper window size, so hold that here, this one uh, image, but here actually seems like we zoomed, uh, zoomed in here, right? And then uh, if we run the some sort of key point, the one, we might actually can identify the key point even here or the, there too. That's okay, right? But the, for choosing the image, the, the uh, window size, okay, so in this case, we use actually uniform size. This side also the same size, right? 
And then if we actually only, if we look at only that image patch, you can see that actually we got the this patch over here. We got the this patch. Obviously, they look different, right? So, so that statistically, we look at the, the color. We usually look expect the, the uh, image gradient, and then, uh, and then we look at the, the distribution of that gradient. Uh, here, actually, the, we you can see that actually there are certain distrib uh, distributions. In this case, I we showing the this color distribution, but better one is actually distribution of the this uh, gradient of color. But anyway, some sort of dis uh, distribution function. Uh, typically, we use this uh, histogram. But you can see that clearly, even in the color level, they are different, right? So even though actually they are coming from the same part of the the uh, the, uh, the, the scene, we we cannot we cannot say that actually they are same thing. So we actually failed here. So we'd like to address this issue. So another approach is that initially we try it out, we expect this uh, try it out this window window size. We increase here, and then we expect this feature. We keep doing that, we expect this feature, and so on, right? Then across the these different image scales we actually define the different image uh, window and then we actually extract uh, this uh, different histogram here 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 there right and then we check that we check that uh, whether those uh, whether those two distributions actually equal to or not right uh, 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 from here to there we actually testing everything but there probably here actually we can say that this uh, uh, distribution of color expected from this patch same, uh, very similar to the uh, that of from this image patch, right? Then, uh, then actually, we, uh, you can see that actually they are very similar to each other, right? Then actually, we can actually choose the particular scale even for this, uh, even for the this image, right? We can do that, but obviously, the, here we try it out the multiple scales, and obviously, it takes time, right? Ideally, we need to extract the, uh, uh, this kind of feature in a very efficient manner since actually there will be the many other actual components that we need to do for performing image search. Also, the, actually, the, the extract image feature is very common for various, uh, various kinds of computer vision applications. So this module should be done quite efficiently. So we are not really satisfied for this kind of approach. So when you think about it, actually, there are there a lot of research how we can actually uh, uh, how we can actually address this issue in an efficient way. Uh, do we have any questions so far? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, there is a lot of technique, but actually the one technique is actually known as automatic scale selection, right? Basically, the, we wanted to select the, the the scale in an automatic way. How we can do that? Uh, typically, the, we actually define or some sort of the we, we somehow design a function on a region, uh, basically the innovator that's like scale invariant, uh, in the scale invariant. So, so typically, we can, some can just using the, the, the average intensity, uh, average intensity of the pixel from the patch. Uh, for example, then think about it. Uh, main point is that for this patch, we can actually measure the average, uh, average uh, intensity. You can do that, right? Every intensity, right? Then how can you use that? Then here this is actually the value of that average, uh, average intensity, right? And then uh, x axis actually different region size. But if we actually draw that that uh, f value here, f is the average intensity. Then uh, as a function of region size, it may vary, right? But you can see that this is some example. It might increase, but at some point it peak and goes down, right? But even the actually the uh, reduce down the image with half, we actually reduce actually we uh, actually we reduce the, the scale here into half. You can see that actually the uh, I mean the <laughs> overall shape. I mean they, it is not exactly the same thing, but the overall shapes are similar to each other, right? It's just the scale. We just scaling down the image, the original image, right? So basically, their their uh, their distribution in terms of the this the alpha value across the region size should be maintained, right? Then can you get the idea how how we can choose the proper the, the scale? One may one can try it out a different idea. One simple idea is that how about choosing the this the, uh, local maximum here in terms of the, the average intensity, right? So basically the main idea is the main issue is that uh, 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 even though actually we are look we are even though we are getting the this the, we look at the scene in a different viewpoint or, or with a different zoom level. We wanted to identify that proper auto, proper uh, key point with the proper scale, the, the, the same one, right? Same scale. Then 
one of the, the uh, one of idea is that choosing the this the, the proper region in a way that taking the this maximum uh, the, uh, the maximum value in terms of average intensity. We pick that we actually look at the this the regions uh, we look at this function and choose the S1 scale at that at that case. Also we do the same thing. In this uh, at uh, in uh, maybe this is from different image. We might pick a different actual region size and then uh, along the this the maximum peak. Then uh, that's actually the, our main idea. Let's just see the actual how this work. In the end, it turned out to be the, actually the, this actually the, we can we can achieve the this the region scale invariant region uh, size uh, actually can be uh, found in uh, uh, independent uh, independently across different images. Actually, let me show the example here. For this the same scene but with uh, this different zoom level, we try it out. Actually, we draw the F We actually measure the every intensity within this picture. And then we actually show that how the average intensity varies as we increase the, the patch size. You can see that as we increase here, here, there, uh, this value uh, varies, right? Varies, increasing, and somehow other it, it now goes down. Uh, also, the it also the uh, goes up and goes down, right? Uh -huh. And then in this case, we we found the actual local peak here, here, right? And if we choose the, this one at that. At that scale, we got the, the maximum. At that case, we got the maximum one, right? But if we see that the patch looks like this, with a different this from the here, this from the there, right? You can see that actually they are looks very similar to each other, right? But typically, they are actually this the they are actually different pixels, right? A different number of pixels since actually they are different resolution. So we typically transform them into the canonical space. In other words, in this case, they rescale these different patches into the canonical size, let's say 10 by 10, something like that, 10 by 10, 20 by 20. Then if we do that, uh, in other words, we, if we normalize them into the, the, the regular canonical size, you can see that actually you find that they're very similar to each other, right? That's the main idea, actually. Uh, how do you know the, how do you know the, they must have a maximum, huh? local maxim, maximum? The local maximum? Yeah. They might have a lot of local maximum. Right, that's actually a very interesting, interesting idea. So actually there there could be there are many there are multiple local maximum. So that's why there has been a lot of research to designing this proper proper this uh, fun function. Uh, basically there we need to find this uh, proper function that does not have the that kind of the uh, I mean the, that does not have the this the very the uh, 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 odd behavior. So actually, there's a lot of research, I mean, uh, still there could be the multiple one, but actually people found out that the, the blood detector, actually Laplace and, Laplace and Gaussian, turned out to be actually very uh, uh, stable. Uh, basically, there, I, I cannot talk about a lot, but actually there, there has been theory that when you do the actually Gaussian filtering and their approach, uh, uh, basically there, we don't actually, there, we don't create any new Additional uh, local maximum, at least. I mean, they could be the uh, basically they could be the uh, the nonetheless they could be the many local maximum, but actually they're still actually we do not generate any additional additional uh, local maximum when you actually generate different this uh, image resolution. But actually that's a very important issue. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that uh, that uh, does it answer to your question? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, so differ we used actually average intensity, but because of that issue, we typically uh, used uh, this Laplace theorem of Gaussian. The Laplace theorem of Gaussian actually looks like the, it has actually this kind of shape. The Laplace theorem of Gaussian is kind of the sum of the actual second derivative of the Gaussian, and then uh, basically the, it has a shape of something like this, and then so with uh, this uh, here actually we are showing the uh, I would say LOG with a different this size actually. Then uh, <laughs> this actually has a different the different blob with a varying this size, small small circle, big circle, right? And if we actually apply we actually apply the, this this small the blob this LOG with the small one, it got a high response. But actually, if you apply the big one, it actually it doesn't have the big response. For the big one, if you apply the small one, it doesn't give the much of response. But actually, if you apply the this one, it actually gives a lot of response. I'm actually here. I'm just giving an intuitive explanation, uh, but actually I didn't really talk about. I didn't really. I didn't give you the real definition of the response and so on. I will talk about it later on. That's the main idea. 
LOG actually it has been uh, independently identified to be as a good block detector. Before we talked about corner detector, right? Hell's corner detector. But actually, the uh, block de we commonly use the block de uh, actually the sieve, which I will talk about later on, built on top of this using this LOG the block detector actually. So, for example, uh, in this image actually, we actually tried out uh, this different different actually the uh, dif uh, different uh, different scale, uh, different size of this block detector. But actually, this actually this LOG relates to the Gaussian. So actually, the, we can we can adjust its shape based on the standard deviation, the width of the this Gaussian. And then basically by you uh, by using the actually this different scale, at some point we can get the, actually uh, the maximum response. And then at that case, if we draw the some other some of the this shape of the Gaussian on top of this one. We can actually get the, somehow the, this. Uh, uh, we can get a very. We can identify the, this this region that uh, uh, that looks like the circle within this image, right? So that's why actually this is known as the actual block detector. First of all, I, mean the, I need to talk about the Laplacian of Gaussian. But actually, the the you know the, the Gaussian, right? The Laplacian Laplacian LOG, nothing but actually the this the, we adopt, we apply the the Gaussian. We apply the Gaussian filtering. Onto the image, input image, right? If we apply the actually the if we apply the uh, Gaussian multiple times to the image, obviously the image will be more blurred, right? So the uh, basically the Gaussian is nothing but given the uh, given the pixel, if you apply the Gaussian, it means that we actually average out the, all the pixel uh, 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 under this uh, uh, nearby this pixel with this Gaussian weight, the, the weight that coming from Gaussian function. Uh, given that given the process, we actually the sigma is actually uh, this width of the Gaussian, right? Uh, bigger, bigger standard deviation is the more wider, wider Gaussian. It means that we look at the we filtering against the image with the more wider width. So that's why image looks more blurry. So basically, this is actually one of the basic the, uh, information about the image processing. I'll just give it a high level idea here. And then what's the LXX it indicating second derivative? Actually, the uh, uh, derivative of the uh, derivative of the this Gaussian along the x, and again another the second derivative along the x again, and then this actually the uh, 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 second the double derivative the second derivative along the y and y again about the this image with the Gaussian, and then we and then we apply the this function right we apply this value on top of the this image and actually this actual response basically this I mean the here, the main idea is applying the, this the LOG to the image. It looks like they're applying this kind of filter. Here, as you can see, this uh, some value, some bigger value, uh, low value, actually even the negative value here, this kind of shape on top of the image. Uh, given this pixel here, look at a uh, uh, line here, we apply the, this, the, this kind of weight onto the pixel, and then we average out that one. Then that's the actually response value. And so here, as we use, uh, uh, does it clear to you? I mean, the, do you have many uh, experience on the image processing, this kind of filtering process? No, no. Uh, so do you have any other question about here? So I, I think if you will just use Gaussian, we also could get the bias pictures, right? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, exactly. Why should we use the lab plus of Gaussian? Uh, we can, it, uh, basically, there has been, uh, as I mentioned before, LOG also there has been tested a lot. But actually, the one of the one of the reason of the using LOG is that even our human this the digital processing unit based on the this second derivative. So basically, the while we are observing here, given this image, if we apply the uh, here, if you look at the look at here, if we apply the this uh, the LOG here, looks like actually the response along the here looks like it's also the very very sensitive to the edge, right? It means that somehow also the, the second uh, second uh, the derivative. So basically, it, it got to be the very response to the edge, right? Yes. So basically, edge is nothing but some bell, some some color here, and then suddenly we got a different color, right? So basically, LOG very uh, very sensitively responds to some some sort of edge, and that's the main reason is that even our visual processing somehow the uh, at, at some point actually all the our uh, human the visual the processing. I don't know much about the bio, the uh, neuro, neurophysical one, or according to the neurophysical study actually, some of the human visual system also relates to the second derivative of the Gaussian, surprisingly. So actually that's the, some other this, the original support of the choosing this LOG. 
But overall, it also responds to the certain edge. You can see that actually the, this image with a very small the Gaussian value, you can see that actually the, some of the, we got the response from the, along the actually the edge, right? But uh, uh, basically, the, because of this shape, actually, if we got the, some, some of the, uh, if uh, actually the, here we got a big value, small value, and some here, the, uh, along the edge, we also got the, some, 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 some of the response. We can detect the edge. But uh, uh, when you consider all the shapes, actually, it responds more or lot onto this, uh, this uh, circular, circular shape. So that's, uh, that's, uh, actually, that's why we got the name, we named it as a block detector. Even though also it also responds to the, the uh, edge. But as you can see, uh, if we're actually choosing the more wider, bigger uh, standard deviation, actually, uh, it actually shows more blurry, blurry region. Do you have any other question? No. Okay. That's the main idea. Actually, I didn't really, the, <laughs> I didn't really prepare about the, this low level image processing concept, yeah. but actually, the, uh, just the, uh, my high level idea is that, that, that this kind of the mask, Mask and then to complete this image, we apply this mask onto the this uh, across the different images, and then we got this this kind of, uh, this kind of the uh, response value, and we visualize that uh, this kind of one. You can see that actually this uh, very high resolution, and we gradually compute low resolution. Why we are computing this the uh, great? So you can see that as we use the more higher standard deviation, it looks more blurry. In other words, we actually computing more low resolution of image of, of the uh, of the original one. In other words, we compute the different uh, kind of different uh, uh, different scale of images. So typically, this, we call it this as a scale space, scale space. So along the this axis, we actually compute the we can look at the different scales actually. And basically, then different actually the here our goal was that we want to look at the actual local maximum, right? Same thing. <laughs> At each pixel here, at the same pixel across the different resolution, we look at actually the uh, we look at the at the center pixel here. We look at the nearby the value. Also, we look at the uh, the nearby value at the lower resolution. Also, the same one in the uh, this higher resolution. And given this uh, space, actually this is scale space, and this is actually image space, right, along the x and y axis, right. In this series space, we look at the local maximum. There could be there many lo multiple local maximum. That's fine actually. We also there we, we, we actually there we can uh, we know that. But ideally we wanted to design a kind of robust technique across that, that uh, even uh, even at the case. We look at actually different scale and then we actually identify the actually the list of local maximum. And then among uh, even though there could be uh, multiple one, we wanted to, we actually look at the maximum response maximum. So uh, basically, the uh, more the higher response against this LOG, and then if you apply the, the kind of the LOG detector onto here, uh, this actually some scale of the uh, <laughs> LOG value, I guess, and then we uh, we actually get a lot of actually local maximum. That's why actually we have so many the, the uh, circle here. You can see that actually the, we got the very big circle along the this the, this shape, right? Also, we got a lot of the small circle along this edge, right? There could be many different ones. So, uh, surprisingly, we also got the, some of big response here, right? Since we look at the, uh, uh, we only look at the local maximum. There could be the many different actually circles. <clears throat> and also, the people actually thought about how we can actually accelerate uh, here. In, uh, for the Laplacian case, is the uh, Laplacian case we need to compute actually the double the, the second derivative, right? But uh, we wanted to actually thought about how we can do accelerate this here. But actually, instead of using the double derivative, we can also use the actually the, we don't need to actually, the, we just use, look at the different Gaussian. Here, one Gaussian is another Gaussian with a more higher standard deviation. K is actually some, some sort of constant, actually. Some constant which is bigger than the small than here. And then, given these two different scale of Gaussian, if we take the, the difference between them, it turns out that this is actually very similar to the, this, the, the, this LOG. So for example here, blue is actually the Laplacian, <coughs> and red is the LOG. I mean, there are certain difference, but they are very similar to each other. But ideally, eject shape is not really important. What's the real important uh, the, uh, issue here? What are, the, uh, what are the most important characteristic of the function that we choose? What's the, what's the question? Uh, basically, the, 
why is the actually the why we are using the LG and DOG? What's the main goal? Find that point. The, yeah, the find the point. find the actually key point with the proper scale, right? Yeah. In other words, we detect that one along the this local maximum, right? Yeah. In terms of detect local maximum, it doesn't really matter. It turns out it doesn't really matter. So that's why actually the, we can use LOG or the, uh, this difference of Gaussian DOG. That's the main idea. And then um, basically the <clears throat> there are actually a lot of benefit of the, uh, some of the benefit of the using DOG. So actually the DOG as an approximation LOG is used in the, even in the fifth pipeline. Fifth, which I will talk about later on. And the, uh, the ma main benefit is that we don't need to compute the second derivative here. And then also the, the Gaussian of the, the image actually. Given this image, we need to compute the different, level, um, the different levels of the image filtered by Gaussian. Uh, actually, they, they need to compute anyway. So actually, uh, basically, the the different different level of Gaussian uh, on the image actually already the available, so we can very uh, by taking the their difference, we can compute the very efficiently the DOG. That's the main benefit of the using the DOG. And again, I may talk about here. Uh, I mentioned it here. We look at the different scale, uh, and then we did, we actually compute the uh, compute this local maximum into the this the. Uh, DOG in the uh, in the scale spa space, and then also the, there could be many response. The response here is that uh, the 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 actual meaning of the the response is that basically the, uh, whether there will be the uh, local maximum or not, something like that. And then we reject some of the local response with the very low contrast. I mean, the, for example, the image looks very. I mean, the, uh, along that local maximum, we don't get the many color change. We just reject it since it's not really interesting. The, uh, the contrast is that the color color change. I mean, the bigger color, bigger contrast is that some of the region of image very low value, some other region has a very higher value, something like that. H higher constant is the more higher color change. So, with higher color change, maybe the along the edge, also along the block boundary, we you can see that there are a lot of color change, right? So, we wanted to we wanted to actually the, uh, detect all the regions. For example, if you look at the here, there are not much color change, right? The low contrast, we cancel that one. We, 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 instead, we want to we, we like keep this one since there are a big color change. That's the main idea. And also, there we eliminate edge response. You know the why, the edge, also, we, we know that actually the uh, allergy also, DOG also responds a lot to edge, but edge is not a really robust one, right? So, actually, some, some people say that uh, op, uh, basically, some, some, in some cases, we can identify the, the so a point along the edge here, some other detect, some other case you can detect here. It's not really repeatable at the uh, uh, same location. But if we choose the this region, this can be the uh, detect in a different, uh, even though actually uh, uh, across different actually uh, uh, changes, different viewpoint and illuminate something like that. So that's why actually we wanted to pick that one. Uh, yeah, we eliminate the, the this edge response. <clears throat> uh, actually, the this actually the summary. Uh, after this, uh, uh, even actually adopted in the adopted in the actually the uh, fifth pipeline. So basically, the uh, even the original image, we apply the Gaussian filter here. Then you can see the image looks a little bit blurry, and then we actually take the more. Uh, we we actually we actually adopt we uh, apply the actually we apply the Gauss that process again. The image more blurry, uh, gradually more blurry, blurry, right? And then. <coughs> As you can see, by taking the difference of Gaussian, it will compute, then it actually compute the DOG. We, we take that this one, we got this one, right? And so on. And then, uh, basically, the, in fifth, uh, fifth paper, actually, we call it this off top. And then, uh, at this level, actually, the, maybe there, there, are, uh, there could be many, many pixels. But the image actually very smoothly varying. The color very smoothly varying since we apply the Gaussian multiple times, right? So at that case, actually, we might need this many pixels. So we have to reduce down the resolution. For example, initially we have this image, but at that level, actually, we reduce down the image resolution. And then with the same process, uh, this uh, different level of Gaussian, and then we pick the DOG. Because you can see that actually, the, uh, we actually spend a lot, we actually, it is designed in a way to accelerate the, this computation of the, this different resolution, right? Since, it, it, since actually they wanted to accelerate this process a lot. And this actual response of the uh, DOG on the <coughs> input image, you can see that actually the 
Uh, basically, it's local maxima. Some, ca some cases, we got a very big block here. Probably we find that the local detect, uh, 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 local maximum in a very uh, low resolution, even though it's a small one, something like that. There could be the many ones. Uh, so, but actually, we, we actually remove some of the, the uh, we, have to, we have to remove the, a lot of the uh, low values. I mean, there's some, sometimes like, there are not much contrast, we, we, uh, we actually remove them. And let's see that this input image is actually local maximum in this case. C is actually, uh, we actually reduce down the very small response and then we have reduced down, and then also we have reduced down the active response, and we can get the, uh, this kind of one, about 500 one. But actually, the, as I mentioned before, actually we wanted to compute the many local, local key points, right? Uh, so that actually, the, even though there could be the, a lot of, even though there could be some occlusion, then we wanted to identify the uh, key, uh, some feature across some of the region, and then we can perform the, uh, the matching, right? So basically, there are 500 feature, local feature out of the image, Seems to be good. Yeah, that's a reasonable size, a reasonable number of uh, number of local key feature. Okay, so based on this one, we can actually compute the local feature. In other words, we identify the key point or some of the window size actually. Yeah, that's it. The, the next question is the how we can actually summarize that information. How we can summarize? How, how can we compute the, some sort of the uh, description information out of the pixel within that local patch? Uh, do you have any other question? Comment? Actually, so we, so we, we use this method is to find the correct uh, region scale, right? Yes, yes. We identify but it's, it's also very complex. Why don't we just use the method one? We do one? Method one. Method one? What, what's method one? So try a lot of region scale and calculate. Ah, that is that one. Benefit. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, uh, it's very complex. Yeah, it is complex, but it turns out that actually there. Uh, okay, so it is actually there. Uh, I would say that there, uh, in terms of explanation, it, it sounds a little complicated. Yeah, actually, it's complicated, but in terms of performance, it's there. Uh, uh, it, it it works quite well. I mean, some of the actually there, some of the actually the very fast one actually can be done. Uh, you know the. Much less than one, or, or much less than one millisecond, something like that. Uh, also, the it actually very robust. It turns out it, it has it has been reported that it actually the if we do if we extract the, the feature based on this approach, and if we if we perform the matching, it turns out that actually it actually works quite well. Yeah. So actually, there has been the actually if I look at the, this original fifth paper, there actually have been more than forty. I, I cannot really reject it, but more than 40 pages of the paper, that's the, the very complex, but actually there's even a lot of the, uh, it built on top of a lot of actually prior uh, the, uh, experience and uh, the study along the uh, along the, this topic actually. It is a lot of accumulation of knowledge, but it actually turns out that it works quite well. Actually. That's the main reason, fast also very accurate. Yeah. So for example, also the, you can also do the, uh, you can also the LOG also useful. So you can use actually the DOG and LOG uh, with this multiple scale. So I just, but I don't know how long it will take. But actually the, uh, basically the, uh, we can accelerate that process uh, based on the, uh, this kind of the uh, approach actually. Yeah, this actually the, this more or less actually the acceleration process. But key, key thing is that we use DOG, LOG and then find local maximum, yeah, that's the one. Which is also the, at high level, that's very similar to the, this, the Harris corner detector. I see. Yes. <laughs> okay, the next question is that, given this image, we identified a lot of the local, local key points. Also, we actually, the, we actually compute the uh, certain this scale invariant, uh, scale invariant way of the, this, choosing the this proper uh, window size, right? Then how can you represent them? So again, even though this description of the this local path should be the invariant to the various of these chains, illumination chains and with, uh, uh, many other ones, also it should be distinctive. In other words, you know, two seemingly different local paths should have a very different, uh, should have a di very different actually the uh, description, right? Uh, uh, if they are same thing, then there's no point. I mean, obviously, if it's the matching, then this might match with the very incorrect one, right? So the, the, the description should be the invariant also very distinctive, in a way unique. 
To do that, actually, first of all, we can think about uh, rotation invariant, right? Rotation invariant is that, suppose that uh, uh, given these two patch, if we, we actually look at the, what are the major dominant direction of gradient, in this case, color change in that way, right? Then if we, if we look at the dominant gradient, gradient is nothing but delta across the, the uh, uh, near, uh, nearby pixel, then color change reduces down in this direction, that gradient turns to be that direction. But here, you can see that the image patch of, of, uh, about rotary, right? Then the, grad, the color change, the actual color value uh, goes down along that from here to there, right? So you can see that the gradient is computed that way, right? Then, obviously, you can see that there are rotation of the image patch. How can we design the rotation invariant description? Simply, you just align that into the sum of canonical, canonical direction, right? So, for example, uh, we rotate the patch according uh, 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 in a way that the, the, the dominant direction of gradient, whatever, whatever the dominant direction you find, you align them into here at that level, right? You actually rotate the patch in that way, and then compute some value from there. Then it will be the rotation invariant. So in this case, actually, the, here uh, we detect the patch here, and then this is the dominant gradient direction, color change direction, and we align them here at that direction, actually. Whatever patch, whatever direction you choose, you align them into the here. That's the main idea. In there, it's very simple, right? And then the other, uh, uh, the same thing, actually, same one. But here, actually, we compute it. Uh, here, we actually compute it. Through what, uh, <coughs> we actually look at the, this. Through, how can you do that? How can you compute the dominant direction? That's the one. And then we actually, this actually showing the histogram, right? This the, uh, in this histogram of the, this the, uh, uh, angle of the, your gradient. This sum of, sum of the angle, another angle, another angle, something like that. And then when you actually look at the, when, uh, when you go with the pixel, using the image, you compute the, you, you compute the gradient, and then you actually the count the how many, how many gradients you are getting here, right? And then this turns to the dominant one. Basically, there a lot of pixels pass the, along, uh, the gradient along that one, right? And then we compute the dominant angle, then we, all, we actually we rotate that in a way the dominant one should be the located at the first one, something like that. That's the, actually the finding the dominant one and then uh, transforming into the, the canonical direction. If we do that here, same patch, and then if we the, do that, uh, then we actually detect the, that direction, that direction, that direction, uh, by converting them into the canonical space, we got the this patch, this patch, and that patch. There are certain difference, but actually the, we actually find the reason of the very similar uh, the in the patch. Uh, so, uh, any question? No. Okay. <laughs> so, so now it's it's now it's time to talk about CF. CF is actually just built on top of the the uh, the different material that I talked about so far. CF is actually scale invariant feature transform. And then the, the basically this showing the how we can compute the actually the uh, this description. Uh, basically, given this image patch, uh, basically we choose the this proper region region uh, window size, right? And then we compute this four by four sub patch, four by four sub patch. So uh, then uh, basically there are sixteen cells, and each image patch in, in each sub uh, each cell we look at the actual gradient. We compute the gradient. And then actually these are that this actually showing histogram, histogram of, of, of the gradient. So in this case, if we uh, this patch this one for something to there, and then uh, this means that along that direction we got a lot of uh, a lot of pixels actually, and that patch has the gradient along that direction. Also, there we got a lot of direct a lot of pixels ha having the gradient along that direction, something like that. This actually the we just visualizing histogram in that way, in a different angle. You can see that there are, there are about eight bin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight bin. So basically in each cell has the eight, eight, eight bin. And, and then overall there are four by four cells, and each cell we got the eight histogram of the, the gradient angle. So that in total it's the 128 dimension, something like that. So there could be uh, basically there we can increase the cells uh, cell number, the histogram angle. Depending on that, actually, it can be the, that could be the 256 dimension and so on. But this is actually one common setting for computing SIF. And then this is actually known as the, 
if you start with a shift and this actually description of the, the local patch so basically there is just a, a set of the uh, basic in a way uh, con this is nothing but concatenated of the histogram of the local uh, this gradient actually and uh, it turns out that it actually worked quite well it also there had a lot of the viewpoint change basically the, this is a very different two images right uh, but at the background actually this is, it's from the same view but actually by, by extracting shift and then uh, it's very different occlusion, different color, illumina different illumination, and uh, uh, <laughs> you can actually identify the same region and in the uh, in the region correct way. That's the main region of the, actually the uh, using the shift accuracy. Also, it's quite fast actually. It can uh, run in the real time. Actually. Uh, that's the main idea of the shift or the sum of region. But also there are actually the many different other uh, manually created descriptors. But shift actually very uh, very similar work uh, in, in, the, in that field. A lot of techniques also are uh, built on top of the shift. Uh, there's a known uh, there's actually gist. Gist actually the kind of the shift in the global scale. In the shift, we actually detect the main local uh, local one, right? But there, instead of that, actually given this or, uh, original input image, we divide, we actually we compute only one one feature, right? Given this original image, we, we actually computed this kind of the, the one. Then we call it the actual gist. It's kind of the, it's not a local pad, local descript, kind of global descriptor. Sometimes we want to use the global, global, uh, uh, global descriptor that say, uh, such that we can encode the overall context of the, each image. And surf is a kind of acceleration of the deceive. I'm not going to talk about all, uh, low level detail, but actually it, it uh, adopt a lot of the technique related to the uh, image processing and improve the uh, extraction performance while maintaining the accuracy. Uh, in this case, surf actually using the actually the using the integral image or some sort of the approximated this the LOG DOG. This actually showing the uh, kind of discrete version of the LOG actually. So. Uh, with uh, it, it actually by uh, by using uh, actually uh, sorry uh, this actually original original this DOG or LOG this is actually very the binary level of the LOG DOG so by instead of use, by away from the using the float variable to the just using the binary value you can very efficiently extract the feature and then uh, also there there are a lot of the source code available for this one. Uh, also, but actually the still actually the, we are using some of application using a lot of the shift. But in some of cases, actually CNN based conversion neural net based feature, deep learning based feature, actually turn out to be the outperforming even the accuracy of the shift. So the later on, I will talk about the CNN feature or something like that. Since actually the uh, big CNN also deep learning also the edge uh, actually the getting more wide impact if, uh, even on this image search. Also there uh, there are some other one. Uh, some of uh, also there are actually very interesting image feature. Tiny feature. It's just, not, it's just nothing but uh, it, it's just using the uh, they could be a lot of image at the web, right? So before I mentioned they're just using raw RGB itself is not a good image descriptor, right? But surprisingly, this work is said that we could just using the raw RGB information. But here we're just using a lot of the data, 80 million images, 80 million of the tiny images, why tiny images? We just using the uh, basically the given original image. We just compute the 30, 32 by 32 image, something like this. Uh, then we, we can get the, this kind of a lot of the very I mean, the, this human face, very human face, something like this. Very small image, and for this one also very small image of the uh, the uh, one. And <coughs> suppose actually the at one time given the this core image, we also compute this the very. Uh, we actually computed this 32 by 30, this 32 by 30 very small image of the core image, and then we performed the, this the uh, matching, uh, what are the actually matching, uh, what are the closely matching image, right? Suppose actually the it turned out to be the this one, right? And then some people say that okay, the core image is very close to the here, then the core image may be very similar looking person like this one, right? We can do that, or sometimes that tiny image may map to the chair, even car. Then we might actually able to successfully identify each uh, each uh, information, right? 
the, the, uh, but the bottom line is that we should have a lot of image, 80 million, right? So basically, uh, in this case, actually, this is one of the early work of the showing, indicating the importance of the data. As we get the, a lot of data, we just, you just don't need to use the actually shift, just using the, the RGB itself, just work, right? I mean, so, I mean you know, some of you already mentioned that the shift may be complicated, why don't we use just the more simpler one, right? But even the simpler one may work, right? Uh, under the assumption that we have so many images. Yeah. Think about it. Uh, so actually, there, this actually, there, uh, you don't need to do that. Actually, this is not a uh, homework. I mean, back then, you know, the, the shift, I mean, the, before we have in the very the deep learning based one, I usually had this kind of the problem assignment. Just you know, the, <clears throat> so far I talked about actually the, how we expect shift, right? But also there are, there are a lot of the available libraries. So I'd like to give you the uh, opportunity that trying out those one. We can extract the shift feature out of this image. But actually you don't need to, you don't need to do the, you don't need to build the everything from scratch. There are many available libraries like OpenCV and VLFit and just the uh, uh, compiling and those one. You can actually, the, you can even extract the, this, the, uh, the shift and its response. But actually the, uh, I, I'm not going to give this uh, one as a homework since actually I wanted to guide you to spend more time on the more recent technology like the deep learning or some other one. But if you're interested, you can do that. But I just mentioned that CIFTA is still very uh, useful. Okay. Uh, by now, I wish that you understood the, the main idea of the scales, invariant region selection, and then which is done by the automatic scale selection method. Along that line, you can just be using the average intensity. Well, we can use the LOG, which is, uh, can be approximated in an efficient way by the DOG. Also, the uh, uh, built on top of everything, we actually talked about the shift as a local descriptor. If you want to know more about this topic, actually, you can go to the, my, the uh, chapter 2.5 of the, my book, actually. Then you can get the uh, more detailed description, actually. Yeah, next time, I will move on to the, some of the basic deep learning methods, its application to the computer uh, vision. And then I actually, so far we, we, uh, we covered the this basic level, this uh, descriptor. Now we, uh, I will build on top of some of the other index scheme and matching scheme uh, from there. Uh, yeah. So again, go over the next lecture slide. Uh, also to come up with uh, some questions, what we talked about today. And then I, uh, you need to write that uh, three times before the midterm exam. And uh, yeah, some of the, the also the, uh, if you go over to my book, there actually I already, I, I already identified common questions and also answer them in, in my book actually. If you want to know actually the, if you want to know the, the answer of the, your particular question, let me know. Then I will get back to you. That's it. Do you have any question? No. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.